says, oh, I guess um, before I didn't do this question because um, I uh, I thought this would be nice uh, for a tutorial, which it is. Um, but since I have time, let me just uh, work this out. It's actually a really nice setup. I think your textbook even uses this as an example. It's a classic example. Um, let me see what your textbook does. I think it would uh, use it as an example for um, time dilation. That's the classic um, example. Yeah, Half-Life of a Muon. It's an entire subsection. And I think um let's see want to see if uh, ah yeah yeah this picture it this kind of summarizes uh the calculation that we are going to go through so um you know the place it comes in the text of uh, they are talking about this before they introduced the length of contraction. Now, in the uh, in Earth's reference frame, you know, if a muon has to travel this distance, then the amount of time that the muon lives for is longer than how long it lives in its own reference frame because of time dilation effect. Then you might um, try to look at how does it look from the muon's perspective because its uh, proper lifetime will be just proper lifetime. How does the muon get to the bottom of the mountain? And the answer is length contraction. From the muon's reference frame, Earth appears length contracted. So the distance that muon has to travel, or more precisely from muon's perspective, the distance that the Earth has to come closer is actually shorter due to contraction. So that's what the question is getting at. Let's uh, just uh, work through it. It says, um, suppose a cosmic ray colliding with the uh, nucleus in Earth's atmosphere. Oh, do I want to? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, let me just show you the image so that cosmic ray shower. So that um, when it describes this production of muon in the upper atmosphere, you have some picture to associate with. There are some really nice artists' drawings of these. I think this is the one that I like. So, or one of the ones I like. So this, okay, this is enough. So um, what this is illustrating is the cosmic rays, which are highly energetic protons from outer space, um, colliding with just the gas molecules in the upper atmosphere. You can almost think of it like a proton-proton collision. There's a lot of energy there. It produces a bunch of unstable particles. They, um, the first particle they usually produce are pions. That's what these are showing. And these pions will, some of them, they decay into muons. So this is a picture of a positively charged pion that's decaying into muon. So the muon is created here. And the question is basically getting at, okay, how far does it travel before it decays? So, so that's the picture. Uh, not that you need it. <laughs> you don't really need the picture, but uh, we'll get to particle physics towards the end of the semester, and there's a lot, there's a lot of fun stuff we can talk about. So, cosmic ray produces a muon that has uh, this uh, velocity. So, or in the parameter that I've been using, we would say, okay, uh, beta of that muon is 0 0.98. And for later, when I need it, gamma will be one over square root of one minus beta squared. And I have a feeling I'll probably need that number a few times. So let me just work out it, work it out numerically and just to have it available. One over square root of one minus 0 0.98 squared. Okay, 5.025. Uh, I'm just keeping one extra significant figure, just in case. 5.025. Okay, uh, how long does the muon live in Earth's frame of reference? Ah, that's time dilation. So the formula that you need for time dilation is that in the lab frame where the muon is moving, it's going to be leaving for 
um, its own proper lifetime multiplied by gamma. So this will be, well, let me just write down gamma ta for now. And I'll plug in all the numbers in all together. How far does the moon travel according to the earthbound observer? Oh, so um, sometimes we ask a pretty mundane question, you know. This is something you've known since physics 4a. Uh, distance traveled is speed times time. And this is, it's just kinematic, so it's as valid as it was before. The only thing that uh, a little bit more exotic in this context of special relativity is that this time, instead of being the the proper lifetime tau, it'll be gamma tau. It'll be the time dilated lifetime. So the muon travels, uh, I'll just have to watch out for these units later when I plug in the numbers. It'll be moving at it to speed. So beta, oops, saying beta. So it's moving at speed beta c times the duration of time, which is gamma tau. Plug in the numbers, that's the answer. Okay. How far does the muon travel relative to Earth according to the muon's perspective? Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's a very convoluted way of asking. Um, but, um, so if you imagine you are the muon, then you are not the one that's moving. It's the Earth that's moving towards you. And um, as the Earth is moving towards you, well, you can, um, you could describe this as how far you move relative to the Earth. Um, so for that scenario, so uh, the situation of a muon and Earth, it's a symmetric. If a muon is moving at 0 0.9 AC when Earth is at rest, then when the muon is at rest, Earth is moving at 0 0.9 AC. So same speed as the, in the muon's reference frame, Earth is moving at the same speed that muon is in Earth reference frame. Now what changes is the duration of time. In this expression for speed times duration of time, the speed hasn't changed. That's still beta C. But the duration of time is going to be back down to tau, not gamma tau. And part D gets to that um, example that I was pointing to earlier. So, you know, given that muon has five times as, uh, in muon's perspective, there's five times as less time, how does it, um, how does the end result end up being the same with the perspective in B and C? It's that, well, it's because uh, distance between Earth's surface and upper atmosphere is shorter, length contraction by this factor, gamma O. Next. <laughs> I didn't realize the question did that for me. Um, so that's why it's um, because the distance is length contracted in the shorter amount of time in muon's reference frame, it still travels between the two same points. So let me plug in the numbers here. Um, I guess I can just type in the numbers. Um, so, Gamma tau in microseconds, that'll be 5. Point, oh, what is this? Gamma times uh, 2.2 microseconds. It's a proper lifetime. So 11.06. Or I think if I, if I say 11, it'll say it's correct. Yeah. And uh, sorry, I just realized um, I positioned these wrong. I should have positioned them to the right. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, 11. Uh, microseconds in uh, Earth's frame of reference, and in this 11 microseconds, it 11 microseconds it travels 11 microseconds times beta 0 0.9a times c, uh, approximately three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. Oh, um. Oh, do I want to? Let me do it this way. I'm going to do the unit conversions in place here. So here, this is the uh, muon's lifetime, lab lifetime, but it's in microseconds. So I need to multiply this by one e minus six to convert from microseconds to seconds. All this will give me an answer in meters. Uh, I want that in kilometers. 
So I'm going to multiply it by 10 to the power of minus 3 uh, to, so that the meter answer gets converted to kilometer answer. So, okay, 3.25 kilometers. So that seems reasonable. Um, so a little bit on the shorter side, but I think it, it is actually right. Muon produces way up in the upper atmosphere, have, have a, not as good a chance of reaching the ground. Okay, how far does the Muon travel relative to Earth according to Muon's perspective? Oh, yeah. So that's um, comparing these two expressions, they're different by gamma. So I can take this, this last answer divided by gamma, which is 5 point, oh, wait, I wrote it down, uh, gamma. So 0 0.647 kilometers. Uh, that should be it. Let's see. So that's the, and I think it, this is uh, basically a numerical version of this example in the textbook. Relatively simple question, no paradoxes here. Um, at least uh, um, once you figure out uh, which effect is what um, you should pay attention to in two different reference frames, then I think it's all 